Okay, continuing on the purpose of miracles, examining whether or not uh, some are for today or not, looking at John 12, 34 to 37. The multitude therefore answered him, We have heard out of the law that the Christ is to remain forever, and how can you say the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is the Son of Man? And Jesus therefore said to them, For a little while longer the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, that darkness may not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. For you have the light, believe in the light, in order that you may become sons of the light. These things Jesus spoke, and he departed and hid himself from them. And though he had performed so many signs before them, yet they were not believing in him. Compare this to 1 Corinthians one twenty-two. For indeed Jews ask for signs, and Greeks search for wisdom. On the other hand, many did believe, their belief being enhanced by the miraculous events, the miracles and signs of our Lord. Sometimes it works, sometimes they don't. They don't. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no guile. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God, you are the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You shall see greater things than these. These beginning, This beginning of the signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name, beholding his signs which he was doing. And Jesus in John 4:48. Jesus therefore said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. There are many other verses that address this. Hebrews 2.4, God also bearing witness with them, those who spread the gospel of salvation in verse 3, both by signs and wonders and by various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his own will. So our Lord himself encouraged faith based on the signs he performed. John 1.50-51 Jesus answered and said to them, Because I said to you that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? You say, You shall see greater things, things than these. And he said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, you shall see the heavens open, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. John 4, 48. Jesus therefore said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. John 10, 37-38. If, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do them, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. There was time when people just would not believe no matter what miracles he performed. And the Apostle John, in 14.11 of John, testified that the signs which our Lord performed were indeed intended to induce faith unto salvation. John 12.37, 20, 30, 31. But though he had performed so many signs before them, yet they were not believing in him. Many other signs, therefore, Jesus also performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. So there are many more than even, he performed so many that are in the book, there are many more. But these have been written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The miracles indicated in scripture were real, and the following passages attest to that fact. Herod testifies to Jesus actually performing miracles. Luke 23, 8. Now Herod was very glad when he saw Jesus, for he wanted to see him for a long time, because he had been hearing about him and was hoping to see some sign performed by him. The Jews in general knew and acknowledged that our Lord performed many miracles. Acts 2, 22. Men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus the Nazarene, the man tested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst just as you yourselves know. So Jesus, Jewish rulers, leaders, testified to our Lord's performing miracles. In John 3, 1 and 2, Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to him by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. The Jewish ruling body, the Sanhedrin, testifies that Paul and John were also performing miracles in the name of Jesus. Acts 4, 16. 
verse 15 first, but when they had ordered them to go aside out of the council, they began to confer with one another, saying, What shall we do with these men? For the fact that a noteworthy miracle has taken place through them is apparent to all who live in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. Miracles are often short-lived in the memory of the people, though, however. Psalm 78, 42 to 43. They did not remember his power. The day when he redeemed them from the adversary, and when he performed his signs in Egypt and his marvels in the field of Zoan. Matthew 11, 20 to 24. When then he began to reproach the cities in which most of his miracles were done because they did not repent. The miracles of Jesus were often discounted because people refused to acknowledge that Jesus was God's son. Mark 6, 2 to 5. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and the many listeners were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things, and what is this wisdom given to him, and such miracles as these performed by his hands? Is not his, his the carpenter, the, the son of Mary, and mother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? Are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown, and among his own household. So despite the miracles. And he could not do, he could do no miracle there, except that he laid his hands on a upon a few sick people and healed them, and he wondered at their unbelief. Right before them, some say, well, I'd be in the first century, I would surely believe in him. These didn't. John 14, 9 to 12, 15, 24. Jesus said to him, have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How do you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Otherwise, believe on account of the works themselves. So people who knew Jesus as a local man were incensed at his miracles. Matthew 13, 15-68. And it came about that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed from there. And coming to his hometown, he began teaching them in their synagogue, so that they became astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom? And his miraculous power. Is this not, is not this the carpenter's son? Is not that his mother, mother called Mary and his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown and his own household. And he did no, not do any many, many miracles there because of their unbelief. Even our Lord's brothers were not convinced of our our Lord's miracles. John 7, 3 to 5, his brothers therefore said to him, Depart from me and go into Judea, that your disciples may also behold your works which you are doing. For no one does anything in secret when he see himself sees to be known publicly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For not even his brothers were believing in him. Our Lord's miracles, however, testified to his deity, that he was the Son of God who was equal with the Father. Look back again at John 10. If I, do, if I do not do the works of my Father, do not believe me. But if I do them, though you do not believe me, believe the works, that you may know and understand that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. But in disbelief they sought all the more to kill him. Therefore they were seeking again to seize him, and he eluded their grasp. And notice that John the Baptist did not perform miracles, which would have pointed to himself rather than to our Lord. And many came to him and were saying, while John performed no sign, yet everything John said about this man is true. So John 15, if I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have not have sinned. And but now they have both seen and hated me and my father as well. For And for whose benefit ultimately was the miracle of feeding the 5,000? Ultimately, the people misunderstood Jesus' miracles and miraculous signs and attempted to force him to take over the nation Israel and kick out the Romans. They lacked them, the knowledge of their own spiritual bankruptcy and repented faith in him instead of themselves. <coughs> Ultimately, the benefit went to the disciples who would remember the many miracles that our Lord performs. But the disciples would themselves go out on their respective ministries and likewise be performing miracles just as our Lord performed. The disciples would perform them that most people reacted in lack of faith. They would remember. Most people reacted in lack of faith. In spite of Jesus' innumerable miracles, the people self-centeredly desired more miracles for their own benefit or amusement and we're not willing to trust that Jesus was the Son of God. 
This would be the reaction of many to the gospel message of the disciples would bring to the world. However, many others typically believe, and as the miracles performed by our Lord served to authenticate to many who Jesus was, so the miracles the disciples would perform would serve to authenticate these messengers of the gospel later on. So, the disciples would then benefit by experiencing firsthand the different responses of people to the performing of miraculous signs so they could wisely choose to utilize their miraculous spiritual gifts when the time came. The Bible Knowledge Commentary in Matthew indicates that the disciples benefited by the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 in yet another sense, which does not seem to be clearly indicated in this passage. The author, Bob Bieri, suggests that Jesus was teaching the disciples that they would later be involved in feeding people spiritually, and that the source of that feeding would be the Lord himself, who provides a superabundance of spiritual food. Barbieri suggests that Jesus fed the 5,000 primarily as an object lesson to the disciples to teach them this. Although this may be correct doctrine for other scriptural passages, the passage here does not seem to develop such a lesson for the disciples, so the reader of this passage could definitively say that Matthew intended for his account of this miracle to teach such doctrine. It seems that the primary reason that Jesus fed the 5,000 was because they were hungry. For our Lord is a God of compassion who supplies all that you need. Of course, our Lord fed all of those hungry people. Noise, noise, noise. Of course, the disciples should be mindful of and respond to the true needs of people, physical, emotional, as well as spiritual, just as our Lord did. Now, there were miracles performed as good for evil purposes. Exodus 7, 10 to 11. So Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh, and thus they did just as the Lord had commanded. And Aaron threw his staff down before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a servant. And Pharaoh also called for the wise men and the sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their sacred arts, their secret arts. Exodus 8, 6-7. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came up and covered the lands of Egypt. And the magicians did the same with their secret arts, making frogs come up on the land of Egypt. Matthew 24, 24. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and will show great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. They just want to hang around and make noise. Might as well stop this one. Well, Revelation 13, 3 to 4, 11 to 15. And I saw one of his heads, his, the revived emperor. And I saw one of his heads as if it had been slain, and his fatal wound was healed, and the whole earth was amazed. And they worshipped the dragon, the Satan, because he gave his authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who is able to wage war with him? And I saw another beast coming up out of the earth, the false prophet. And he has two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence. And he makes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast, beast whose fatal wound was healed. The first beast, the Antichrist, underwent an apparent healing and miracle of being raised from the dead after receiving a mortal wound. And he performs great signs, these great signs, so that he even makes fire come down out of heaven to the earth in the presence of men. And he, the Antichrist, deceives those who dwell in the earth because of the sign which was given him to perform in the presence of the beast telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who had the wound of the sword and had come to life. So a coming back to life of a human being was performed, an actual miracle, but to an evil end, so that all would worship the Antichrist and the beast. And there was given to him to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast might even speak and cause as many to, as do not worship the image of the beast to be killed. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits like frogs. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs which go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them together for the war of the great day of God the Almighty. More on this next time.